Hello and welcome to this first episode of a series of videos I'm making here to learn how to program from zero, from scratch. You don't need any previous knowledge about programming, neither any knowledge about mathematics, just the simple four operations. The purpose of this course is to help you to learn the necessary skills about programming so you can pick up any book around there and start reading and understand it. Because I notice that many books around uh, have some sort of assumed knowledge that you should somehow already have and many friends complained that they wanted to learn how to program, but they found that as a big barrier at the beginning. So I'm going to try to help here to surpass that barrier. So you're not going to become an expert in programming after this short course, but it's going to give you the necessary tools to start to yourself. How does a program looks like? Well, it's basically a text file that you can open with any text editor, and it will look like something that you see here. There's some text and some comments and keywords, which right now they don't make probably any sense to you, but that's fine. You will learn them and they will be interpreted by the computer and executed. Well, there are several, actually hundreds of programming languages out there and all of them are easier or more complicated or targeted for something in particular specific. We are going to learn about Python. And the reason is because Python is very popular is in high demand now in the job market and it's a language that is easier to learn compared to other languages because it doesn't have so much assumed knowledge and it's powerful because despite the fact that it's easier to learn you can do so much with it and it's used nowadays in finance uh, data analysis and all sorts of businesses so what can you do with a program where for example, print a message on the screen, download a file from the web, draw something on the screen, perform a calculation, basically anything, everything you see happening in your computer or your phone is a result of some sort of software, a program that someone, a group of people wrote and is executed in the computer, done in a particular programming language. So basically anything you see happening in your devices is a result of a program written in a programming language. Now, we need a certain level of compromise here because as you can see here on the left, this is a language the computer understands. It's a binary language and it's extremely difficult for humans to, to read and understand that. So basically, it would be very, very difficult to communicate with the computer that way. And on the right side, you see what basically would be our human language. And for a computer, it is impossible to understand that. Right? So we need to reach a certain level of compromise. And that's where the programming language can, uh, um, is used, because there is it's a language that can be read by a human being, we can understand what it says. It has uh, normal like words and that we can use. They're mostly English and, you know, we can make a sense as people. And it has a logical structure that allows uh, the system to translate this logically um, piece by piece into the machine code for the computer. So that's a kind of compromise we have in between. So let's make an example. So let's first think about purpose for an example program. Let's say calculate your age. Well, for that, we need some requirements. It could be like asking for your name, ask for the current year and ask for the year you were born. With that information, we can proceed and calculate your age. So in a programming language, let's think about what kind of comments will be, will be required for that. I cannot comments will be interpreted by the computer to do that. So let's say we have a comment called input. So we say input, we put the name of the question and that uh, the answer that we give is going to be recorded. Then we put another input. What is the current year? Another input year you were born. And then we have to calculate this age, right? Well, this calculation has to go somewhere. We need to store this internally. Well, in this case, we store it in a, which is called variable. What you see here is called age. We give a name to the variable and the data is stored there and we can use it later for whatever purpose we want. In this case, we want to output this to the user. So we print. This is another comment. We say, okay, print, print, hello, are your name, which is the name that you introduced it before. And then we say, print your age, you are 
age years old. So this age comes from that calculation that was executed before. So basically for a program, think about it as a um, black box where you introduce some input, right? And then it will provide you with some output and something happens inside that black box box and this is something that you do every single day for example you go to google and you type some search terms that's the input that you're given and then google will give you an output which will be the results of that search so you do this every single day with devices phones everything we use we introduce an input and then we obtain an output and this process this magic inside of these uh, black box is what we are going to learn in this course so basically it's the program that is processing that input and produces an output because at the end it's all about basically all about that so now to do that we need which is called an integrated development environment an ide which is basically an app in your computer a program that we use to program is a program that allows us to type in a programming language of our choice and it will make it easier the process of transforming that program into something that the computer can read and understand so in our case we're going to use a ide called thony and this is open source it means that it's basically this the way it has been built is public is open and everybody can see how it works internally and it's also free so you don't have to pay anything for it and it works on Macs, Windows, and Linux. In this case, we are gonna go through the process of installing it on Macintosh and Windows, depending on the system you're using. So first I'm gonna explain you how to install it on a Mac, and then I'm gonna repeat the same process for Windows. So you choose and follow the steps depending on your system. Phony is for beginners. So, I mean, we can use it for any purposes in Python, but it's a bit limited. If we want to do something like more pro and but for our purposes right now is excellent because you don't have to worry about any other configuration in your computer. You just install this and we can start typing code in Python. We can see the results and we can start learning how to program. And then later I'm gonna explain you, show you how to use other more advanced uh, IDs, other integrated development environments for uh, just a reference so you know what you might find in case you want to use it for uh, professionally working in a in a company okay so now let's go and install it on the mac let's install thony on the mac here i went to the website thony.org let's make this bigger and you can see here there is a link for windows mac and linux we click on the mac and this package here once it's downloaded in our download folder, what we have to do is double click on the Thony package. It's going to ask you some few questions. Just say continue, continue, agree. And when installed, it's going to ask you for the password of your computer. Once it's installed, it might ask you if you want to move the package installation uh, file to the bin. You can just say yes. And now, if we go to our applications, we can see here Thony is installed. I recommend if you are going to use it a lot to move it down here to the dock. So now that we have Thony installed, we just need to click on it and start running. In Windows, open any browser that you want and that you have and type thony.org. That will take you to this website where you can download uh, your version for Windows. Click on the Windows link. Once it's now loaded, open the file and follow the instructions. In this case, well, let's install for all users. It's fine. Say yes. And this is the installation for Thony. Just typical Windows installation. Just next, next, next until you have it. I will create an icon on the desktop so you can use it later. And this might take a little bit of time. Once it's done, we just have here an icon on in our desktop. Let's open it. Now that we have Thony successfully installed in our system, basically it is the same on Windows and Mac or Linux. Is a window here in the upper part is the area where you type the code. For example, 
And here on the bottom is what is called the Python interpreter. Here you can talk directly to the interpreter of Python. Interpreter is the engine that actually reads Python source code, the Python code that you write in the upper part, and it's going to transform to translate that into machine language and execute it. So here on the top, we write the code, and here on the bottom, we can interact with the interpreter. Also here on the bottom, we have the output of the, the program that we execute here in the main window. Before we run this, we need to save it. So we can either go here on the saving icon or here in file and save. I'm going to save it on a folder called Python. And inside this folder, I'm going to create another one called hello. And inside that folder, the, set, the file is going to be called hello.py. PY is a Python extension for Python files. We saved once it's saved. Now we can go here and click on this um, RAM button. And we can see the output written down here, hello world. Now we are ready to start. We know how to execute a simple program in Python. So now in the next videos, we are going to learn how to program. Well, that was a lot to cover for our first video. So this is going to wrap it up right now. And in the next, we are going to dig more into the different aspect of programming and learning how to program in Python. Thank you for watching.